So we're going to be doing some uh, pest control today. I'm with the guys from Air Hunters, Karat and Rulf. We've got uh, some cool stuff today. My impact, it's not an impact Mark II, but it's got some of the Mark II plot parts like the new plenum, uh, new gauges, stuff like that. And um, it should do the job for us. So we're going to get out and, and uh, do some shooting. Right now there's almost no wind. Um, I can hear the birds chirping all over the place, so I think we're in for a good day. we just got to uh, get stuff set up yeah. and have a good time. Let's go do it. Go. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> Yeah, stalling at about 50 meters, uh, at a bit of an incline, so I actually didn't even dial anything for it. Uh, looked up with a scope, saw him there hiding in a hole, loaded, pulled the trigger, down, straight down. So, it's a really good start to the morning. Uh, I think Karat's up next, so we're going to basically rotate. Um, you know, one of us takes a shot, the other two film, and then we keep going like that. It's a good system when you've got more than one guy who wants to shoot. Um, yeah, so we've got a lot of work to do. Let's go do it. Oh, big explosion. <laughs> My first sparrow for the morning. Uh, yeah, I can't pass the opportunity on a sparrow, so that was a nice pop. So for this kind of shooting, when we're in, we're in tight quarters like this, and we have to shoot quickly, I would actually prefer uh, the gun that Ferrat has with a, a 600 millimeter barrel shooting 23 grain slugs. Um, just for the simple reason, it's more maneuverable. This gun that I'm using here is a little bit heavy to lug around. Yeah. Um, it's nice for when you need to take those really long shots, but for this kind of shooting, I prefer something shorter. So, Khairat's probably got the best setup out of all of us for this kind of shooting, but yeah, when you need to take that 150 meter or 200 meter shot, then this is the one you want to have. <laughs> So we've uh, changed tactics a little bit. Um, the walking around is tricky because uh, it takes a while to set up. You've got to either lie down, you've got to find a pole, and by that time, stuff's gone, and you're out in the open so the birds can see you. So what we've done now is we've come under the roof here to a nice shady spot. Uh, the guys are setting up on hay bales, and they're the perfect height to kind of rest your gun on. We've got a 360 degree view and we're not easily seen by the birds as they come land in. So we've got starlings, sparrows and pigeons basically landing all around us here. So it's a perfect setup and I think Tadart just spotted something because he's, he's setting up here behind me. So let's see what he can do. Oh, headshot. <laughs> so yeah, that was a house sparrow and 106 yards right in the head. I can just see him tipping over. It looks like it hit him to the top side there. Gotta check the footage though, but uh, that kicking and flattering like that is usually a sign it's in their head. So, yeah, very happy about that one. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he's dead. So, starling 42 meters, pretty straightforward. Didn't have to dull anything. There is a bit of wind and it's, it's been quite tricky because obviously in here it's quite sheltered. So I, all I have to really judge the wind is the mirage. And the mirage doesn't tell you how strong the wind is, it just tells you, um, you know, which direction it's going. So it's a lot of guesswork, but um, yep, it's all good so far. And hopefully we can get a whole lot more. Got to shoot quickly here because they pop up very quickly, but uh, you know, if you try and move through your procedures quickly, then it should be quite easy to get it done. We positioned in a spot that gives us almost a 360 degree window. But it's tricky simply because the birds we're targeting are quite restless and shots have to be taken quite quickly. Cut out nails this one and I just managed to get it on camera. I think I shot that house better straight up to Mars. <laughs> it's completely gone. It was around 35 yards with a 23 grain slug. Yeah, I might be shooting the smaller slugs today, but 
I'm definitely not out numbers. They definitely got some hitting power, eh? We're working on a rotational basis just to make sure that everyone gets equal opportunity to shoot and film, and Rulf is up next. It's funny to think back to just a few months ago when I introduced these guys to the slug setup. Rulf is now using 26 grain slugs and has taken some awesome shots. <laughs> 55 meters with a nice ricochet. Yeah, we're just popping them today. Just pan to the right on the edge of the mountain. <coughs> Next to the pole on the right, there's another one over there. Right, so we've got a bird at 119 meters, a little mossy starling, I mean sparrow. 119 meters. Load it up, I'm gonna get on him here. Oh, gone. Oh, yep, dead. Dead. <laughs> so I could see the mirage there blowing right to left so I just held right edge of the bird and straight down. I think I shot it in the neck. Wasn't much of a pop so <laughs> a bit disappointing in that, in that sense but yeah straight down. So it is difficult to shoot here when, especially when there's a lot of cows around. Um, there's a lot of cattle so we always got to keep our eyes open. I've got roof with me the whole time when we do all these videos and all these uh, shooting episodes. So he's always spotting for me and vice versa. I'm spotting for him. So always keeping in mind that there is cattle and they are walking. So you guys definitely, when you're shooting in environments like this, keep it safe. Make sure what's in the backdrop. Make sure what your projectile can do and how powerful these things is. So make sure you've got a proper backstop and uh, always watch out for the farm workers because they're also very fast walking up and down. Just be cautious. Straight down, a solid body shot, can't ask anything better. That's also on 96 meters, so 106 yards. We've been joined today by Peter Milan from the channel Pitskit, who doesn't have a PCP of his own, but is a very experienced PRS shooter. Pit is able to see where his missed shot passed by and hold accordingly for the next shot. <laughs> I think there was also a head shot. Um, first, second shot of the day, what's 90? Six yards? Four. Yeah. Yeah, 106 yards, 96 meters. I'll take it. <laughs> A little more. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's take a quick shot there. Um, Starling, well, I actually couldn't spot it for a while, but it was closer than I thought. I saw you looked like you wanted to fly away quickly, so I just held a little bit over and just pulled the trigger and he went straight down. So again, I think it was high up on the body, maybe a neck or head shot, and he fell straight down. So happy with that. Perfect executed shot, that was on 65 yards. He going right from the front, he was from the back and then he turned. But that 23 grain slug just zipped right through him, can you hear the ricochet from here. So very happy about that. <laughs> Look at all that feathers. <laughs> now that was close, very easy shot, 34 meters. Big explosion. <laughs> that is 
loud. <laughs> Lovely. Center of mass once again. Boop. Okay, I'm recording. <laughs> 10 meters standing, no problem. So, after a long day of hunting, we are back at our beautiful little camping site over here. We have got the fire running. You can see the beautiful lighting here around our little cottage. And we're currently bringing the guns up so we can do a bit of shooting down there in the road with that beautiful mountain as a backdrop. So we're gonna put some uh, beer cans filled with water down there probably about 100 meters maybe we'll put one at like 150 or something fun like that and then there's some wind now but not that much so we should be able to smash all of them quite easily so let's do that let's have some fun and let's enjoy the evening solid <laughs> i'm gonna take one shot at the top of that gong five centimeter section Solid. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Smoked him. That was a <laughs> big explosion. So yeah, um, the technology in these guns with the slugs, a year ago if you told me we could hit sparrows, which is about the size of that uh, top uh, little piece of the gong, the five centimeter gong, um, I would have laughed at you because it was just, you would have been very lucky to get a, hit a sparrow with pellets on that range. Um, but as you saw now, three shots in a row with Matt, three shots in a row with me and with Gerard. Um, we're not basically not missing. Um, if we miss, it's our own fault and not the gun's fault. It's just unbelievable. Yeah, so this is my can. Completely demolished. So, as you can see, it went in right there, basically where I aimed. Came out there, but the pressure, because it goes in, comes out in the front. So it just exploded. <laughs> 20 threes also didn't do bad. There's again the impact of the 20 threes is just a little bit less than the 26s. Also went in there and exited out on that side. But still, does the job. Very accurate out to 100 meters. And uh, these guns are like laser beams, eh? They're just shooting Matt fantastic. Yours. So it's also a 30, 30 grand. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness and the smallest me. can. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> completely. But you can also see, you can see the dead center. Hmm. Pretty good. And the gong yeah, is peppered. Yeah, show how big the gong, the five centimeter gong is. It's tiny. Tiny, Very tiny, tiny. About the size of a sparrow. As another awesome day of hunting comes to an end, we are very grateful for the sport that brought us all together and we're able to enjoy a beautiful sunset over the mountains. It was great to be back in Cape Town again and just a reminder that if you want to see my travel vlogs from some of these places, you can watch them on my other channel. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.